Hello everyone, this is Professor Yun Chi Kun from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to show you a lecture on conjugate beam method eh, for determining slope and displacement of beams. So first of all, we look at the background. The basis for the method comes from similarity of equations of shear force and bending moment and also slope and deflection. Eh? So to show this similarity, we can write these equations as shown. So for shear, we have dv dx equals to the external load w. And then for moment, we have d2m dx2 is equals to the external load as well. And then for slope, we have d theta dx equals to m over ei. And then for displacement, we have d2v dx2 is equals to m over ei. So you can see some similarity here, dv and d theta here, and also d2m and d2v here. Okay, and w is corresponding to m over ei here and here as well. So we integrate them and we get the shear is equals to integration of external load dx and then double integration will give you m equals to double integration of w dx and then integrate again with dx and then theta becomes integration of m over ei dx and then the displacement becomes double integration of m over ei so here the shear force V compares with the slope theta and then the moment M compares with the displacement V and the external load W compares with M over EI diagram. So meaning that in the real beam here, W is compared to M over EI and then the slope at any point on this beam, theta is compared with shear on this beam and then if we want displacement at this point is compared in conjugate beam with the moment. So in conjugate beam, the shear we mark it as V prime and then the moment we mark it as M prime eh, to differentiate them from the shear force and bending moment in the real beam. So now we know that the real beam and conjugate beams, okay, the slope on the real beam compares to the shear force in the conjugate beam and then the displacement on the real beam compares to the bending moment on the conjugate beam. Therefore, we load the conjugate beam with the M of EI diagram derived from the load W on the real beam. So from the above comparisons, we can state two theorems related to the conjugate beam. So theorem one is that the slope at a point in the real beam is numerically equal to the shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. And then theorem two is that the displacement of a point in the real beam is numerically equal to the moment at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. Consequently, from theorems 1 and 2, for a pin or roller support at the end of a real beam, the conjugate beam must be supported by a pin or roller since this support has zero moment but has a shear or end reaction. When the real beam is fixed supported, both slope and displacement at the support are zero. The conjugate beam has a free end since at this end there is zero shear and moment. So we look at this in more detail in this illustration here. So in a real beam, a pin support will have rotation but no displacement. So meaning that in the conjugate beam, we must have shear and there is no moment, so it becomes a pin joint in the conjugate beam. And then for a roller support in a real beam, there is rotation and there is no displacement. So there must be shear and there is no moment in 
the conjugate beam so it becomes a roller support in the conjugate beam as well and then in the real beam if it's a fixed support there is no slope and there is also no displacement in a fixed support eh? so meaning that there is no shear and there is no moment at the end of the conjugate beam as well so it becomes a free end eh? and then when in the real beam there is a free end there is a slope and there is also displacement at the free end of a real beam so meaning that there must be shear and there must be moment in the conjugate beam so it becomes a fixed end in the conjugate beam and then if you have a real beam with an internal pin okay so an internal pin there is slope but there is no displacement okay so in the conjugate beam it becomes a hinge eh, where there is shear but there is no moment and then for an internal roller in the real beam there is slope but there is no displacement so in the conjugate beam there is shear and there is no moment so it becomes a hinge as well and then in the real beam if it has a hinge so a hinge will have rotation and also displacement so there is shear and there is moment here but we cannot make it as fixed because it's continuous so we make it an internal roller in the conjugate beam so these are the possible end conditions for both the real beam and conjugate beams so when we want to convert the support condition from real beam to conjugate beam, we refer to this table. So next, we look at one example in your textbook, which is example 7.12. So in this example, you are asked to determine the maximum deflection of the steel beam. So the reactions have been computed in this beam, and then we take Young's modulus as 200 gigapascal and the second moment of area as 60 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4. So this beam has span of 12 meters and is loaded with a 8 kilonewton force at 9 meter away from support A. So we determine directions, we get 2 kilonewton at support A and 6 kN at support B. So both reactions are upward forces. So for the real beam, a pin joint will become a pin joint in the conjugate beam as well. And then a roller joint or roller support will become a roller support in the conjugate beam as well. So first of all, we draw the bending moment diagrams for this beam first. Eh? So the bending moment diagram will look like this with maximum moment of 18 kilonewton meter but we divide it by EI because we want to convert it as the loading on the conjugate beam. So from here we put this M of EI diagram onto the conjugate beam and then we determine the reactions at A prime and also b prime so we mark the uh, points and also the positions in the conjugate beam by putting a prime to the points so in this case we have two triangular areas here which we can determine the area which is equivalent to the resultant force. So for positive moments, the M of the EI diagram is positive. So positive correspond to upward forces when we convert M of the EI into loading on the conjugate beam. So in this case, we calculate the resultant force from this distributed force which is triangular and we also calculate this resultant force from this triangular loading so we get 27 
over EI. And then from this side of the triangle here, we get the resultant force by calculating the area of this triangle here to give 81 over EI. So the unit for this 81 here is kilonewton meter, same as for this 27 value is 27 kilonewton meter so from there we can know that the distance to the resultant force as two third from nine meters so it's six meters okay and then here is two third of three meters so it's two meters so based on that we calculate the reactions at a and also directions at B, okay, based on these two resultant forces. So we will get the reactions at A and B. So we get A Y prime is equals to 45 kilonewton meter over EI, and then we get B Y prime equals to 63 kilonewton meter over EI. So we assume that the maximum displacement is within the region of 9 meters. So meaning that we assume that the maximum moment is within this region here from support A, okay, and is within the 9 meters there. So we cut across a section within this 9 meter here and isolate it as a free body diagram. So, we get a diagram like this. Huh? So, we don't know what is this distance x here. And then, at this cross section here, we have the shear force and bending moment, which we mark as V prime and M prime. So, at maximum displacement in the real beam, then we will have maximum moment in the conjugate beam. So when we have maximum moment in the conjugate beam, the shear force must be equal to zero at this section here. And then to determine the magnitude of this point here, we use proportional triangle. So we know that at 9 meter here, we have a value of 18 over EI. So this is 18 kilonewton meter over EI. Okay, so to know this point here, we use proportional triangle. So X over 9 is equals to this value here, which we don't know, over 18 over EI. So meaning that this value here is 18 over EI times X over 9. So based on this free body diagram here, where we put in the reaction of uh, AY prime, uh, which is 45 kilonewton meter over EI downwards. Uh. So first of all, we sum total force in the vertical direction. Okay, so total force in the vertical direction, we have this 45 over EI value. So downward, we put as negative. Okay, and then we have a resultant force which is upward from this triangular load here, which is given by this value multiplied by x over 2. Okay, so this value multiplied by x over 2 is this value here, okay, times x over 2, eh? so it's equals to 0. So from here, when we solve for x, is 6.71 meters. So it's within the region of 0 to 9 meters. So the solution is valid. Eh? So meaning that the maximum deflection occurs at x equals to 6.71 meter from joint A. So now we know that x is equal to 6.71 meter. So we cut across a section at 6.71 meter here with x equals to 6.71 meters. Huh? Okay. So when we sum moment at this cross section here by 
taking anti-clockwise moment as positive so we are referring to this point here okay so this falls as a moment arm of 6.71 meter and then is an anti-clockwise moment so positive moment here and then we have the moment from this triangular load here okay so this triangular load the magnitude of the resultant is half multiplied by 2 times 6.71 over EI, which is this term here, okay, and then multiply by this distance x here, which is 6.71 meter, which is here. So this is the resultant force, huh? and then the moment about this point here from this force here which is this term here is this force multiplied by the moment arm here which is one third of 6.71 meter which is this term here okay and then this moment produced by this resultant force is a clockwise moment so it's negative okay and then we have m prime which is the bending moment that the cross section there so here we use a positive sign eh? okay so positive sign of bending moment is going this way in the cross section so we have anti-clockwise moment for m prime so is plus m prime so everything is equal to zero here okay so for the sign convention of the v prime and m prime uh, or v or m uh, in the real beam so we know that v prime and m prime they are in the conjugate beam uh. so even if they are in the conjugate beam we follow the positive sign convention for shear and bending moment in the real beam as well so if we have an element like this okay so for shear the positive direction for shear is like this huh? okay so on the right hand side of the cross section the shear downward is taken as positive and then if the shear is on the left hand side of the cross section then upward is positive so this is positive sign convention for shear okay and then for bending moment we take bending moment which produces compression on top of the element as positive okay so these are the sign conventions for the shear force and bending moment so we take it this to be the same as in the real beam and also in the conjugate beam as well okay so when we consider shear force on the right hand side of the cross section then we put downward as the shear force direction v prime and then for the bending moment we take it as this way for positive bending moment m prime okay following the right hand side of the cross section if the shear force and bending moment are on the left hand side of the cross section then this will be the positive direction for the shear force and bending moment eh? okay so back to these uh, equations here we solve for m prime so m prime is 201.2 kilonewton meter cube over ei and is negative eh? okay so the negative sign or positive sign they are very important eh? in this uh, method here so here we want to convert the e values here so the Young's modulus value is given as 200 giga Pascal, which is equal to 200 times 10 to the power of 9 Newton per 
meter square isn't it? okay so to convert this to kilonewton per meter square then this one becomes 200 times 10 to the power of 6 kilonewton per meter square so this is 200 times 10 to the power of 6 kilonewton per square meter and then for the second moment of area okay we need to convert it into meters huh? okay so here we want it to become meter to the power of 4 okay so we know that 1 meter is 1000 mm okay and then 1000 mm to the power of 4 is 1 meter to the power of 4 as well right so with this conversion okay we convert this into meter to the power of 4 okay where this millimeter to the power of 4 and this millimeter to the power of 4 will be eliminated okay left only meter to the power of 4 okay so in total this one becomes 60 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meter to the power of 4 okay so based on that this kilonewton and this kilonewton will be eliminated so left only meters uh, in the solutions okay and that is negative 0 0.0168 meter and is equals to negative 16.8 millimeter so the negative sign in the displacement or the deflection meaning that the deflection is downward so upward is positive downward is negative eh, for displacement so next we look at another example which is example 7.14 in your textbook so in this example here we need to determine the displacement of the pin at b and the slope of each beam segment connected to the pin for the compound beam as shown over here so this is a real beam okay so directions at the supports are already computed and given so ay is 27.5 kilonewton and cy is 12.5 kilonewton so take young's modulus as 200 gigapascal and second moment of area as 18 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4 so these are the reactions calculated okay based on the loading of 40 kilonewton at 3 meters away from support a yeah? and then a couple moment applied at support c of 50 kilonewton meter so this diagram here shows the illustration of the elastic curve eh? when it's loaded with 40 kilonewton force and also the 50 kilonewton meter couple moment so notice that at the hinge here there are two slopes eh? so we have theta b on the left hand side here okay which is this angle here given by this angle and then we have theta b on the right hand side here which is given by this angle here which is the same as this angle here okay so we, we call this angle here as theta b l and then we call this angle here as theta b r and then we also have displacement at this hinge here which is delta b so the first step of the solution is to draw the bending moment diagram eh? because we need the m over ei diagram to become the loading on the conjugate beam eh? so in the conjugate beam originally it's fixed here so when it's fixed in the conjugate beam it becomes free okay and then originally there is a hinge at point b here okay so a hinge becomes a roller or a pin internally okay 
so it becomes an internal roller okay since this side is pin okay so we have internal roller at b prime there in the conjugate beam and then originally there is a rocker there okay so a rocker still becomes a rocker in the conjugate beam so c prime is a rocker as well okay so the conjugate beam becomes an overhanging beam like this huh? right and then to determine the bending moment so in this case we use the principle of superposition huh? by drawing the bending moment in parts okay so first of all we look at the bending moment due to the reaction cy which is equals to 12.5 kilonewton upward huh? so in the real beam it's like this okay with a hinge here and with a roller here okay so we have cy equals to 12.5 kilonewton in the real beam okay so when we cut across the section here and isolate it as a free body diagram so we have 12.5 kilonewton force here and then we have distance x okay measured from this point here okay so we take this as the origin okay so we have bending moment and shear force written or drawn in the positive direction following the sign convention that i have explained just now okay so this bending moment due to this 12.5 kilonewton force okay so we have m okay equals to 12.5 times x okay as the equilibrium equation okay so that will give this bending moment diagram here okay where the magnitude at any point here is given by 12.5 x kilonewton meter so the maximum value here is given by 12.5 times 8 meter so this is 12.5 kilonewton so this will give you 100 kilonewton meter okay and then we divide by ei next we look at the bending moment in the real beam okay with the 50 kilonewton meter couple moment okay so now we ignore cy okay because CY, the bending moment diagram has been drawn already. So we move on to look at the next force, which is the 50 kilonewton meter couple moment. And then we will cut across a section there. Okay, so similarly, we have bending moment and shear force in this direction. Okay, so from here, we get okay, minus M minus 50 is equal to zero if we sum the moment at the cross section there okay so meaning that moment is equals to minus 50 kilonewton meter okay so minus then the bending moment is a negative bending moment so it's constant regardless of the x distance so at any point on the real beam the bending moment will look like this okay and it's negative so when it's converted to loading on the conjugate beam they become downward forces eh? so negative moments becomes downward forces on the conjugate beam and just now for the bending moment diagram of cy here we have positive bending moment so the loading on the conjugate beam becomes upward eh? And then next, we want to look at the bending moment diagram due to the 40 kilonewton force, which is acting at 3 
meter away okay from joint A here okay and then we have roller at C and then a hinge at B yeah? okay so if we cut across the section here there is no forces so meaning that the bending moment is zero yeah? okay so bending moment is zero all the way from here to here all right and then we cut across a section on the left hand side of the 40 kilodon force then only we have a bending moment here okay and also the shear force v and this is m all right and then this is the 40 kilonewton force all right and then this is uh, the distance from here okay x so we know that all oh, the bending moment here is already zero so no bending moment there and then uh, this bending moment here is m is equals to minus 40 times x uh, where x is measured from here okay so the bending moment at a here is at three meters okay away from this origin here zero okay so this maximum moment is 40 times three meters so it's 120 kilonewton but is minus 40 x uh. so we have negative values for the bending moment so meaning that they become downward forces in the conjugate beam so after that we calculate the resultant forces from all these triangular loads uh, and also these rectangular loads or uniformly distributed load so the resultant force from this triangular load here is this value here which is 100 times 8 times half uh. okay so we have 400 over ei okay so this is supposed to be 400 kilonewton meter square over ei eh? so the location is at one third of eight meters eh? so meaning that this distance here is 1.333 meters and then for the uniformly distributed here the resultant is 50 multiplied by 8 meters so we have 400 kilonewton meter square over ei but this force is downward eh? okay from the downward uniform load like this and then for this triangular load okay the resultant is 120 over ei multiplied by 3 meters here multiplied by half so we have 180 over ei so this unit is 180 kilonewton meter square over ei eh? and then the distance here is one third of three meter so this is one meter so meaning that this is three meters and then this is four meters this is at the center of the rectangle eh? okay so first of all we want to determine the slope at b on the right hand side eh? so the conjugate beam is sectioned just to the right of b prime so meaning that we just section the beam over here okay and isolate this as a free body diagram so meaning that this force does not appear in the free body diagram eh? when we section the beam just to the right of b and isolate this as a free body diagram so we get a force which is the reaction at c prime there okay so it's 1.666 kilonewton meter square over ei eh? and then when we cut across the section then we have bv prime r okay on the right hand side of uh, the joint b okay we draw all this direction in the positive sign convention eh? so bending moment is this way for the positive sign convention and shear force is upward for the positive sign convention so bb prime r is upward 
for positive and then MB prime is clockwise for positive bending moment. So we have this resultant force here at 4 meter away. Okay, so for this we use a proportional triangle to determine this value here. So over here we have 100 over EI. So meaning that over here we have 50 over EI because it's midway from C to A. Eh? So meaning that this value here is 50 over EI. So this resultant here is from this area here. So this area is 50 over EI multiplied by 4 meter multiplied by half so it's 100 kilonewton meter square over EI eh? and then this resultant force here is from the rectangular load that is acting downward so this area here is 50 over EI multiplied by 4 so it's 200 over EI eh? so this 200 has a unit of kilonewton square meter so we get this resultant force there acting at 2 meter away from point B here and then this resultant force here is at 1 third of 4 meter huh? so 1 third of 4 meter is 1.333 meters so we sum all the forces in the vertical directions so we have uh, BB prime R which is upwards positive and then we have 100 over EI which is positive upward and then we have 200 over EI, which is downward, which is negative. And then we have 1.667 over EI, which is downward and negative. All right. So from there, we get BB prime R equals to a positive value of 101.67 kilonewton square meter over EI. Okay. So this shear force value here is equals to the slope on the real beam. Okay, so we substitute E and I, okay, all converted into Newton and meter square. So this kilonewton is converted into Newton by multiplying 10 to the power of 3 there. Okay, and then this 200 gigapascal is 200 times 10 to the power of 9 newton per square meter so no conversion there and then this one is in millimeter to the power of 4 to convert into meter to the power of 4 we multiply by 10 to the power of negative 12 so we get positive 0.0282 radian so we have a positive value being that we have an anti-clockwise rotation of theta b r so it's measured counterclockwise eh? okay for theta b r so meaning that theta b r is counterclockwise eh? measured from here to there okay and then for the internal moment at b prime we can get the displacement of the pin or the hinge eh? okay so from the same free body diagram, we sum moment at this point here at B prime there. And then we take counterclockwise moment as positive. So first of all, we have this MB prime. So MB prime is clockwise, so it's minus MB prime. And then the moment of this force respect to B prime here will give you a counterclockwise moment. So counterclockwise moment will have positive. 100 EI times the moment arm of 1.333 meters. So we have this term here. And then the moment from this 200 over EI force is clockwise with respect to point B. So clockwise moment, we take it as negative and the moment arm is 2 meters. And then we have another force which will create moment at point B and this force will have clockwise moment respect to point B so negative and then multiply by the moment arm of 4 meters there so since there are no other forces causing moment at joint B prime there 
Okay, so we equate them to zero, and when we solve for MB prime, we get a negative value of 273.33 kilonewton meter cube over EI. So we substitute EI with everything converted into newton and meters. Okay, we get negative 0.0759 meter s mb prime which is also the displacement at the real beam at hinge b yeah? okay so the hinge will have negative 75.9 mm so negative meaning that the deflection is downward huh? or the displacement is downward so at hinge b here we have a downward deflection of 75.9 mm and then to determine the theta b on the left hand side of the hinge the conjugate beam is sectioned just to the left of b prime so we section the beam over here okay so in this case this force will appear in the free body diagram where this is by prime okay when we determine the reactions of B and C prime. So this is BY prime and this is CY prime. So now we know that BY prime now will appear in the free body diagram together with this and this triangular load and also this rectangular load. So now BY prime is there in the free body diagram as opposed to the previous the theta br this by prime does not appear there because we section the beam over here where bi prime doesn't appear now we section the beam over here okay on the left hand side of b prime so by prime will appear in our free body diagram so similarly from the triangular load we have a resultant force of 100 over ei reaction there and then from this rectangular force there, we have a resultant of 200 over EI force there. And then this is CY prime from the conjugate beam reactions. And then similarly for the shear force and bending moment in the conjugate beam, we draw them following the positive psi convention. So they are on the left hand side of the cross section. So shear force upward is positive and then clockwise moment is positive for both mb prime and bb prime we call this bb prime l because it's on the left hand side of b okay so this is by prime which is equals to 181.67 kilonewton meter over ei so based on this free body diagram here we sum all the forces in the vertical direction so we have a BB prime L which is upward so it's positive and then we have a BY prime which is upward also so it's positive 181.67 of EI and then we have this 100 over EI which is upward so positive and then we have this 200 over EI which is downward so negative and then we have this 1.667 over EI which is downward so negative Okay, so there is no other forces, so we equate this to zero. And the solution gives BB prime L equals to minus 80 kilonewton meter square over EI. So we substitute EI by converting them into newton and meters. Huh? So we get minus 0 0.0222 radian. Okay, so this BB prime L is also the rotation or slope on the real beam. So the negative size here, meaning that the rotation is clockwise. Eh? So meaning that theta BL here is clockwise rotation. So the rotation on the left hand side of B is clockwise. Eh? with a magnitude of 0 0.0222 radian. So since we have drawn it clockwise, so we don't to need to put in the negative side to it. Eh? So that's all for the lecture for conjugate beam method. Thank you very much for listening.